the name of that is I'm going to sit at the welcome table. It's good to see you here today. We have our singing group, minus one of our members who's still fighting off a cold. Um, so you have a, a women's quartet today, and they really do a nice job on the music we have. Uh, so you'll be offered the opportunity to sing along if you're familiar with the songs, or if you're trying to get familiar with them to sing along, uh, please do join in. Um, I, I think that there's a birthday person sitting back next to Della Johnson. Isn't that right, Terry? <laughs> it's not. <laughs> so, good to have you with us today. Welcome. And we hope you find this a, a wonderful opportunity to worship and give thanks to God for the wonderful gift of Jesus Christ. Um, so I'm going to, I think we have our, do we have a song before the confession? Okay. I changed things around a little bit today because we have six songs instead of five. So um, I would invite our singers to come up and get settled in up at the uh, microphones as we get ready to do the first song. Almighty 
comes the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us confess our sin in the presence of God and of one another. Most merciful God, we, we confess that we are captives to sin and cannot free ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We, we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us so that we may do life in your will and walk in your ways for the glory of your holy name. Amen. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together with Christ. By grace, you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen.
morning. Good morning. Our reading is taken from the letter of Paul to Philemon. Paul, a prisoner of Christ Jesus and Timothy, our brother, to Philemon, our dear friend and co-worker, to Athena, our sister, to our fitness and fellow soldier, and to the church in your house. Grace to you and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. When I remember you in my prayers, I always thank my God, because I hear of your love for all the saints and your faith toward the Lord Jesus. I pray that the sharing of your faith may become effective when you receive all the good that we may do to Christ. I have indeed received much joy and encouragement from your love, because the hearts of the saints have been refreshed through you, my brother. For this reason, though I am bold enough in Christ to command you to do your duty, yet I would rather appeal to you on the basis of love. And I, Paul, do this as an old man, and now also as a prisoner of Christ Jesus. I am appealing to you for my child, Onesimus, whose father I have become during my imprisonment. Formerly he was useless to you, but now he is indeed useful both to you and to me. I am sending him, that is, my own heart, back to you. I wanted to keep him with me so that he might be of service to me in your place during my imprisonment for the gospel. But I prefer to do nothing without your consent, in order that you that your good deed might be voluntary and not something forced. Perhaps this is the reason you were separated from me for a while, so that you might have him back forever. No longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. So if you consider me your partner, welcome him as he would welcome me. If he has wronged you in any way, or owes you anything, charge that to my account. I, Paul, am writing this with my own hand. I will repay it. I say nothing about your own need, even your own self. Yes, brother, let me have this benefit from you in the Lord. Refresh my heart in Christ. And confident of your obedience, I am writing to you, knowing that you will do even more than I say. The Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Now large crowds were traveling with Jesus, and he turned and said to them, Whoever comes to me and does not hate father and mother, wife and children, brothers and sisters, yes, and even life itself, cannot be my disciple. Whoever does not carry the cross and follow me cannot be my disciple. For which of you intending to build a tower does not first sit down and estimate the cost to see whether he has enough to complete it? Otherwise, when he has laid a foundation and is not able to finish, all who see it will begin to ridicule him, saying, This fellow began to build, and he was not able to finish. Or what king going out to wage war against another king will not sit down and consider whether or not he is able with 10,000 to oppose the one who comes against him with 20,000? If he cannot, then, while the other is still far away, he sends a delegation and asks for the terms of peace. So, therefore, none of you can become my disciple if you do not give up all your possessions. The Holy Gospel of the Lord. Okay, singers, you're back up. You're back up. <laughs> yes, the fans are blowing everything all over, Jordy. <laughs> But we're not going to give up the fans. <laughs> so 
都走了，没事。and have an entire book of scripture read for you. Yes, the book of Philemon is one chapter long. It is the shortest book of scripture in the New Testament. But it does get to the very heart of what God's grace is all about as Christian people deal with each other. We, we have Paul saying to um, the owner of Onesimus, you know, I'm sending you my very heart in Onesimus. He's been a blessing in my life. And in my imprisonment, he has been absolutely essential for my doing the work of God. And he has become far more than any servant or slave. And in God's grace, Paul requests from Onesimus' owner that he no longer treat Onesimus as a slave. But he will come to discover that Onesimus is a great friend in Christ. And then Paul goes one step further. And here is where we really begin to hear the acts of grace through God's power and love. Paul says to the owner of Onesimus, if he owes you anything at all for the time period in which he was a lot less useful to you, he must have been a rebellious slave. That's all I can think of. He, he must have been kind of a pain uh, for his owner. And, and Paul understands that Onesimus has been through a, a, a change of life, a change of heart. That's that word metanoia that we hear frequently about the change of heart that comes to people when they come to, to faith in Jesus Christ. Well, evidently, Onesimus has had that change of heart. And, and as I always tell my children, you can be sorry for what you've done, but there is still a consequence. 
You remember anybody saying that to you as you were growing up through your teenage years? I can forgive you, but it doesn't change that there's a consequence that you're going to have to face. And that's what Paul was sending Onesimus back into. He still had to face his owner. He had to face his owner for the times when he was far more difficult and not a man of faith. And so his owner is going to have to discover who he is now. And Paul says, I am telling you, he has changed. He has been the biggest help to me, and he will now, with you, be one of the great helps of your life because of his newfound faith. The power of God's grace is amazing in all of our lives. Jesus Christ is an act of God's grace for us. At a time when God might have chosen, instead of acting out of grace and sacrifice, uh, he might have chosen to act out of judgment and wrath. And I understand, as we read through the Gospels and we hear the words of Christ, we hear Jesus saying to people who have kind of lost their way in their journey, in their relationship with God, you're in trouble. You need to have this change of heart once again. You need to stop worrying so much about your own power and authority and the wealth you're accruing, and you need to instead get back into your life of faith. Well, we know how that was met. It wasn't met very well by the authorities, the religious authorities, or the political authorities of Jesus' time. They didn't want to hear that. They were unable. It's it's interesting because Jesus tells us that God's children in Israel are blind. We get into that conversation in John when we have the conversation about the man born blind and his sin or his parents' sin. Um, and it's Jesus makes it clear that the people of Israel are now blind themselves. And of course their first response, it's just like ours, we have never been blind. We know exactly what we're doing. And that usually is a key that we're getting ourselves into trouble. Uh, we, we have stopped following the path that God puts us on. Now, hold that bucket up, please, Debbie. The bucket. All right, who knows what this bucket is? Holly does. What's the yellow bucket for, folks, in the fall every year? Crop walk. Oh, gosh, I never can remember. <laughs> com com communities. Communities. Responding. 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 To overcoming poverty. Is that it? But no, not poverty. Is that right? What did you say? Communities responding to overcoming poverty? Yes. Okay. Okay. All right, <laughs> All right there'll be a, an envelope with a test next week. If you, if you get it wrong, your offering for crop is doubled. <laughs> and I won't remember, I'm sure. Kind of reach that age where some of this stuff slips away a little bit. So an act of God's grace is an act of sacrifice. We know that because of how God sacrificed offered his son as a sacrifice for sin. Well, an act of grace from our congregation has annually been this offering for crop. Our congregation has succeeded in making large gifts, for our, especially for our sides, that, that help advocate for issues of poverty that partially go to the community food bank, they go outside of the community in some ways to advocate and to, to offer the opportunity for people to move forward in their lives because of that advocacy. It's, and it's a multi-organizational opportunity. It's not just Christian churches that do this. There are other parts of the community that also participate in crop. And I know it's been a rough year, folks. I suppose the Pharisees, Sadducees, and scribes could have said to Jesus, you know, Lord, it's been a darn tough year. We, we just can't do this for you. 
We're, we're going to turn our backs on you because it's been difficult. And you know it's been difficult. So what do you expect from us? Well, what does God expect from us? God expects us to live our lives filled with God's grace. We may not get it right all the time. In fact, I'm pretty confident we don't. I know I certainly don't get it right all the time. And you may not ask my teenage boys about that. Okay, because sometimes dad gets into an upright roar with them about what's going on. Instead of acting with grace, I act out of, how could you possibly even think that that's appropriate? How long has it been since you were a teenager? I'm sure that's another phrase you heard growing up. Um, yeah, absolutely. Uh, we don't get it right all the time, but sometimes we get it more right than we realize. We get it more grace-filled than we realize. And crop is an opportunity to do that. And it's the same thing at Christmas time. When, when we go for the global barnyard and we select something to buy, to send out to somebody we will never meet, but whose life will be transformed by that gift of those animals. Um, and that's an act of God's powerful grace for the lives of people. And it happens through those of us who are people of faith, who have come to believe in Christ, who have a change of heart like Onesimus had. No longer do we rebel all the time against Christ and against God's love for our lives, though that certainly is apparent in our culture, society, and the world today. But you and I no longer rebel against Christ or God's love. Instead, our hearts have been changed. We will make the necessary sacrifices. We will turn from having our backs in God's face to really giving glory to God's righteousness and peace and love in our lives through Jesus Christ by the power of the Spirit. And we will make a difference, individually and corporately as a congregation. You know, there are things going on around you all of the time here that you may not be too aware of. Um, we, we were going to sell the stoves out of the kitchen and replace them with warming drawers so that we do not have to pay $1,000 a year to have the solvent system assessed and rechecked uh, checked and refilled. A thousand bucks a year to check that system over the top of that, the gas stoves because that's a lot of money right now for us as a congregation. It's a way we can save. So, Robert and Barney cleaned up the stoves and got all the solvent out of them, and this past week went in to look at the stoves and the power boards and controls on both stoves were blown. There was a power outage which evidently was preceded by a surge. Um, that really hit those stoves, and Robert's going to pull them apart and see if he can get them to work again. But this is the kind of thing going on around us all the time. And you, you need to understand that your church council, in the name of Christ, acts with God's grace on behalf of the gospel in our midst all of the time. They are, are really conscious of what it means to be a small congregation and not have loads of money to spend. And so they work on behalf of God, and Debbie is a big part of that here in the congregation as well. Uh, we have a brand new copy machine. You might say, well, isn't that expensive? Well, it's $100 less a month than the old one was because the technology has become so much better. So there are just two items where we've saved $2,200 a year in the budget. Um, and it's pretty amazing to see those things happen. We, because we have Christ in our lives, learn to live with less and learn how to, to accompany in God's creation the people who have need for what we share. And it's not only financial resources, it is heavily prayer, and I've been talking about that in my lead into my Bible studies for a couple of weeks, how important and critical it is for every one of us to be praying. Scripture guides us and says, 
Pray constantly. Give thanks to God and pray constantly every day. And it does make a difference in people's lives. I know it certainly made a difference for me when I was sitting on the gurney in the pre-op area. It, it really helped me to know that I was being prayed for. And at the same time, the way I relaxed was to pray for you. And it's really interesting because I have this panic attack thing about lying flat. And I knew that was going to come. I mean, you don't go into surgery unless you're lying flat, right? And so the way I dealt with all of that anxiety was to start praying. I do not remember leaving the pre-op area to go into surgery. I have no recollection of that at all. Now, I had the surgery, so I know what happened. But I will tell you that the amazing power of God's grace was over me and around me through prayer that day. Just as it is, just as it is for Candace and Lisa in Hawaii, just as it is when you make prayer requests that we pray for on Sunday and we pray for throughout the week, just as it is all of the time important for us to use the amazing power of God's grace for the benefit and lives of other people. And at the same time understanding what? That it's being offered for us in our lives. So we need to remember that, how, how diligent our prayer lives should be because they are a part of being grace filled with the presence of Christ in our lives. And we could go on and on and talk about this. Now I know what you're saying. Pastor, you have avoided the gospel today. You have to give up the most important relationships in your life. And Jesus uses a term none of us like. You have to hate your mother and father and your children and your brothers and sisters and your wealth, and all. you have to hate all of that in order, and you have to pick up a, not your cross, but the cross, and live your life in sacrifice in order to be a child of God in Jesus, Jesus Christ. Really? Do we, do we really suppose that Jesus meant we should hate all other things in our lives except him? I really believe what the Gospel of Luke is sharing with us is that we must allow Christ to come first. We must allow Christ to be the power that feeds our lives. We must allow Christ to be in all of those relationships because of the support and comfort and encouragement and peace that always comes when we allow Christ to be a part of our lives every day. You know, in some Christian settings, and I'm thankful I grew up a Lutheran, we would be told that if we ever went to a bar and had a beer, that Christ would not be with us in that setting. Well, I, in the Lutheran church, I mean, Martin Luther made it real clear. He met with his students in the local tavern, and they met and had their theological conversations over beer. Now, I have to say, German beer, no thank you, it served warm. I would not appreciate that. Um, I like a, like a good ice cold butt, I'm sorry. Um, however, the grace of God goes with us every place we go. When we are grocery shopping, when we are driving our car on the busy streets of this city, in all of the places to which we go, the grace of God accompanies us. And it is because of our acceptance of Christ. It is because of the confession we're going to make in the Apostles' Creed about what we believe. That we believe in God the Father, the Creator of heaven and earth. We believe in Jesus Christ, the Redeemer of all of God's creation. We believe in God's Holy Spirit, who is the sanctifier who journeys with us every day as the gift of Christ for our lives. We believe all those things, and I will tell you, if we didn't have them, we would be between a rock and a hard place a lot. It is by the courage we receive through understanding and having faith in the triune God and, 
and the triune God's presence in our lives that we make it through the really tough stuff. When Terry Hardy's dogs were mauled, we got it on the prayer chain right away. The two small dogs are doing okay, right Terry? We prayed and prayed and prayed for her dogs to survive the attack that they had received from a neighbor's larger dog. I was thankful that Terry wasn't injured. I thought, how did you avoid that? I, I just couldn't imagine that you hadn't had to go to the hospital too. But prayer is amazing. These small dogs are going to heal up and be okay. You know, yes, we pray for dogs in our church. Imagine that. We pray for cats. I'm not sure cats deserve prayer. No, I'm sorry. Um, <coughs> cats are pretty heady in private. Um, <laughs> but we pray for all of God's creation that surrounds us every day. Most especially including the people who are around us right now in church. And the people who we know are not able to be here with us. These folks most especially take our time in prayer. But that doesn't mean we should ignore the pets and the finances and the emotional stuff and, and the injuries and all of that stuff. All of that has to be a part of the power of God's grace for our lives. And it does make a huge difference. So I want you to remember, by the way, Nancy's daughter, Nuria, is at her home. Now, after hospitalization and a long haul time in recuperative care, uh, Nuria is now at Nancy and John's house. And she has quite a ways to go, but she's back with her family now. We prayed for Nuria. We've only met her a few times, but I know who she is, and we put her on our prayer chain. So if you, know, if you have something going on in your life, please let us know. There is nothing too embarrassing for us to pray for. I promise you, everything is, is an opportunity for us to glorify God through prayer and to use God's powerful grace as a witness to us love for us through Jesus Christ. It is in Christ's name that we gather to worship. It is in Christ's name that we pray. It is in Christ's name that we rejoice and celebrate God's great love in our lives. Amen. So remember the yellow bucket. It'll be there for a couple of months, an opportunity to kind of spread things out a little bit if your money is a bit tighter and you don't have access to quite so much free cash. Um, it's an opportunity to actually be able to spread some of that offering out. So um, we'll be doing that in our home too. We might even have to give up Pizza Friday once a month for the next two months. Oh, I, I can see the, oh, no, we're not, dads, going on. Um, we're not giving up pizza on Friday. We can always have a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So, uh, 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 uh. or maybe it's Taco Tuesday, I'm not sure. Um, <laughs> so we continue now with our confession of faith through the Apostles' Creed. With the whole church. Let us confess our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, God's only Son of the Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried here. He descended to the dead. On the third day he rose again. He ascended into heaven. He is seated at the right hand of the Father, and He will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of God. Amen. Let us pray now for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus, for all people according to their need, 
uh, for God's church and for all of God's creation. Gracious Lord, we thank you for calling us together today to worship. In some way, in each of our lives, your Holy Spirit prodded us, got us out of bed, and got us here. And we thank you for that, because we need to be reminded constantly about the power of your grace to transform our lives and the lives of all people for whom we pray and for all uh, with whom we have contact. Help us always to be your children in the face of every situation, turning you to, to pray for, for requests and thanksgivings and to rejoice with the hosts of heaven in your love for our lives. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious Lord, we pray uh, with thanksgiving that Rudy Mendoza's knee surgery last Wednesday went well. We pray now for his continued healing. We pray too for the people in Pakistan and in mostly in the southern United States in the midst of extreme flooding. Um, we're seeing thousand year floods all over the world. And it used to be that we only saw them every thousand years, but now Lord, uh, perhaps due to the global warming, we're seeing that kind of flooding much more frequently, two and three times in a decade. We pray for people that become the victims of that flooding in our own nation and around the world. We pray for relief for them, uh, where they will be provided with housing and have adequate food and be able to have their lives restored. All of this we pray, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hear us, O God. Gracious Lord, we pray for Melanie McCrone, uh, who's healing after surgery. Uh, we, pray, we pray for Melanie that uh, the surgery went well and was complete, and now in, in Melanie's healing, we pray for the restoration and fullness of her health. Hear us, God. Gracious Lord, we pray for Jim Blair's cousins, Jim and Janet, for his sister Janet for healing. And we pray for Jim as he continues this long haul journey with kidney stones and now to another journey with the loss of vision in an eye. We pray for your healing hand to touch Jim's eye and to help get rid of those kidney stones. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious Lord, we pray for Dave Beecham. We pray for his business. We pray for his life, uh, for improvement in his eyesight following an head injury. Uh, we, we pray with thanksgiving that he has uh, gotten past COVID and we pray that there be no especially long-term effects for him health-wise. Uh, we pray for Ron and Becky who, who sent greetings via the telephone conversation we had last night and offered to this congregation the great love of Christ and God's grace all of the time. We pray for their safety and well-being and, and for them as they have to kind of move out of their house in Egan because they're going to put in carpeting. So they've, they've got a, a big task ahead of them. And we, we pray that you be with them as they undertake all of that. And we pray with thanksgiving for their grandson desiring to be baptized at age 21 and asking Pastor Ron to do that. We pray for the inbreaking of your spirit, uh, that the metanoia of their grandchild's heart might be changed completely and thoroughly. Hear us, O oh God. Gracious Lord, we pray for our sisters in Christ, Candace and Lisa and Alexis. We pray especially for Candace and Lisa. Candace, because she'll have another chemo treatment this week, and then it'll be a few weeks before she receives another one. We pray that it is only a, a lagging amount of energy in her life that she experiences, and that these treatments will succeed in eradicating the cancer that is in the tissues of her abdomen. We pray for your living and loving presence with this family that you'll keep them in your care and bring to them hope and comfort at the turn of every day. Hear us, O oh God.
All these things we pray in the name of your Son and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. May the peace of the Lord be with you. And, and also, also with you. And I've got more prayers. I didn't grab them all. So before you share the peace, uh, we pray for Letitia Rohr. Uh, she is struggling financially with the increases in rent that have been going on all over town. And we pray that, that the Lord will be with her to help her find a, an apartment where the rent is more sustainable for her. And we pray for Don and Larry, uh, Joanna's friends, who are closing on their house at the end of this month. We pray that that will continue to go smoothly for them, and we give you thanks for that opportunity in their lives. And we pray for patience and her dad's family. She's been sick in their home for two weeks, along with most of them. And we pray for your healing hand to rest on this family, especially so patients might get back to Joanna and Tony. Keep them in your care, Lord, as this, uh, this illness continues to hold them down. All of this we offer in your name. Amen. Now you can share the peace. Let us prepare our hearts and minds to receive the sacrament of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. On the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, which is shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. Gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray the prayer our Lord has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. I would like to invite our singers and musicians to come forward first for communion.
the body and blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace, now and forever. Amen.